I like to use the logo of the Audi um, to emphasize on CT, if you see multiple loops of bow right next to each other, not overlapping completely like this, but right next to each other, that's usually a sign that you're looking at an abnormally distended small bow, okay? The second thing I like to teach, sticking with the balloon kind of theme today, um, is these party balloons. When you blow these up, you get distension of the proximal part, then you get a transition point, and then you get collapse distal portion. That's what happens in the bow when you get an obstruction, right? So if we obstruct the small bow, we're gonna get distension of the proximal small bow, we're gonna get a transition point and then collapse of the distal small bowel. And because we know that the jejunum starts up at the DJ flexor in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen, we're gonna be looking for distended loops in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. And then it's gonna head down to the right iliac fossa to the ileocecal valve. And so we're gonna look down in the right lower quadrant for collapsed loops. And if we're seeing that pattern of distended proximal collapsed distal, then we've got to hunt for the transition point. And to find the transition point, I like to, uh, talk about the feculent small bowel sign. So looking for an area of small bowel that has these little bits of gas in it, feculent material. All right, let's have a look at this patient presenting with vomiting, abdominal pain, small bowel obstruction. This looks like our Audi sign, doesn't it? We've got multiple loops of small bowel here. You can just kind of add those loops together. They're too close to each other. Normally you like to have a bit of fat sitting between your loops of bowel, but when they all line up like this, you know you're dealing with abnormal distension. And this is really up in that left upper quadrant, isn't it? You've got distended loops there. If we come down to the right iliac fossa, we've actually got some collapsed bowel down here, haven't we? See that loop? Completely collapsed down. So we've found loops of bowel that are distended proximally, loops of bowel that are completely collapsed distally. So we're thinking there's probably a transition point. Let's try and find it. Time for the feculent small bowel sign, right? So if you look at all these loops of small bowel, they've all got fluid in them, nice air fluid levels, right? Let's just scroll for a bit and try and spot if any of it has little bits of gas in it. You see that bit there? So we start here, fluid, follow it here, transitioning into feculent appearing small bowel. And if we follow it a little bit further, it goes away, goes away, and then what comes away from it? Collapsed loops of bowel. So we've found ourselves our transition point. So rather than having to track bowel for a whole lot of time, We've used that feculent small bowel sign to kind of hone in on the site of likely obstruction. It's there in about 50% of cases, so it's not always there, but it's definitely worth starting off by looking for that sign. We like to assess the transition point, what's happening there. Is there a mass? No, it doesn't look like it. Just looks like there's a bit of a kink in the bowel. Is there a hernia? Doesn't look like there's any abdominal wall hernia there. Um, and is there a lot of free fluid around it or gas? And is the mucosa still enhancing? Yes, it all is. So this is probably a simple adhesional small bowel obstruction. Maybe they've had surgery in the past. It's a good location near the umbilicus there for an adhesion.